I think this might be my favorite Pokemon Yellow solo challenge that I have done yet. That seems pretty strange, because Execute is quite bad, so let's get into it. For base stats, this uh, group of eggs that are actually seeds has 60 HP, 40 attack, 80 defense, 60 special, and 40 speed, giving it a 7.81% chance to crit. So the summary of these stats are basically low in everything except defense, which is like okay, it's like a passable stat. <laughs> and then 60 special is nice, after all the grass and psychic type both deal special type damage in generation 1. One of the most important attributes of a Pokemon in a solo format is its growth rate, and unfortunately for Execute, it has a slow growth rate. In my experience, this really holds Pokemon back, and with these stats, I expect this run to be absolutely brutal. Also on the move pool side of things, Execute really doesn't have much going for it. By the way, Execute and Executor are the only grass types in Generation 1 that don't get access to Swords Dance, so that's pretty sad. Also, it gets hypnosis at level 1, and with my playstyle that might actually be a disadvantage. Through level up it gets access to Reflect, Leech Seed, Stun Spore, Poison Powder, Solar Beam, and Sleep Powder. So at least we can upgrade our sleep move, but that's gonna come at level 48. Also, I find it strange that it learns no damage dealing psychic moves through level up, and the only damage dealing grass move that it gets access to is Solar Beam, which takes two turns, and Sunny Day doesn't exist in Generation 1. I think it's quite clear that the developers wanted all grass types in Generation 1 to be support Pokemon, like they're around to set up statuses and slowly whittle you down with poison, or annoy you with sleep and paralysis. I would say that they're here to set up the screens as well, but uh, yeah, the screens only apply to your active Pokemon, and when you switch out, they are removed in Generation 1, so yeah, Execute isn't even built to do that. Now, going into this challenge, I was like, well, at least it's going to get access to some decent moves through TM and HM, and uh, basically, no. The only good move that it gets access to is Psychic. It doesn't get Body Slam, and it doesn't even get Mega Drain. That one seems like a tough pill to swallow, because now my only damage-dealing Grass move is Solar Beam. So yeah, I guess this move is actually going to get significant play in a solo challenge, which is nice for variety, but not great for me and the results. Also, adding a lot of flavor is going to be Egg Bomb. This is the best normal type move that I have access to. Like you might go use Double Edge, but I hate Recoil. And at least Egg Bomb doesn't do any. And it's just as powerful as Double Edge. However, it does have 75% accuracy. I foresee many misses in my future. Alright, so now let's talk about Execute's starting moves. Barrage and Hypnosis. In Generation 1, Barrage is actually the Execute line's signature move, and it is not a very good signature move at that. Unfortunately, it has 85% accuracy, so it's not going to hit that much, and it has 20 PP. It's a multi-strike move, and it hits 2-5 to five times per turn. There is a 37.5% chance that it's going to hit 2 times, a 37.5% chance that it will hit 3 times, and a 12.5% chance that it hits 4 times and 5 times. I think if this move was designed as a trapping move like Clamp, then it would be much better because you could pair it with Leech Seed and Poison Powder. Now in Generation 1, something you have to understand about these multi-strike moves is that each successive hit deals the same amount of damage dealt with the first hit. So if you get a critical hit, this damage will be applied for every hit instead. And honestly, this is great because the first challenge Execute is going to have to bypass is Brock, and uh, yeah, he has Rock Pokemon, and hitting him with a normal type move that only has base 15 power is going to be pretty awful. But at least right away, I have the chance of dealing between 2 and 5 damage each turn. Plus, with critical hits, I'm hoping that I can do a little bit more damage. Just remember, in Generation 1, the critical hit multiplier is not a flat 2. It is variable based on the Pokémon's level, and before level 20, it is quite low. Okay, so now let's talk about my favorite move, Hypnosis. It obviously inflicts sleep, which is absolutely broken in Generation 1 because the turn that the Pokemon wakes up, it can't attack. However, Hypnosis has a major disadvantage because it misses 40% of the time. And this creates quite a problem for Brock. He has 5 full heals per Pokemon that he is programmed to use 100% of the time that his Pokemon is afflicted with a status. I'm pretty sure they did this so that players could not defeat him using Poison in Red and Blue, and then they just didn't update it for Pokemon Yellow. Unfortunately for me, what this means is if Hypnosis misses 40% of the time, I'm only going to hit with it twice 
12 times. Brock will burn through 10 of these with full heals, and that leaves only two hypnosises that will actually be useful in the fight. So I think as a result, the best way to plan for Brock is just simply ensure that Barrage is going to be doing enough damage to take his Pokemon out. Luckily for me, Execute's defense stat is fairly high. I'm uh, not sure why. It is based on like eggs and seeds, both of which are not really known for their toughness. I guess seeds are tough, but like eggs, not really. <laughs> Plus, look at Execute. It's like all cracked and like one of the eggs is just so sad. It's like all broken open. It doesn't even have a face anymore. Also, have you ever thought about this? Executor has three main heads and one head on its tail. Like which Execute member just disappears? Or does that one turn into the body? I don't know. Seems kind of scary to me. <laughs> Imagine them like drawing straws to figure out who turns into the body. Uh. That also brings me to one point that I want to make about Generation 1. There are so many Pokemon in these games that have multiple heads. Dugtrio, Dodrio, Magneton. Obviously, Execute is the most important one of these because it has five heads instead of just three. As a kid, I always philosophically mused about these Pokemon. Like, do they each have their own personality and consciousness, or are they sort of unified together into a hive mind? I'm sure the Pokedex has more answers, but uh, I really hated reading as a kid, so I never explored it. All right, so now that I'm in Viridian Forest, let's talk about my training plan. Obviously, I'm going to defeat every single trainer here. I am also going to knock out all of the wild Pokemon. After that's completed, I head into Pewter City. Here, I am going to fight the junior trainer in Brock's gym. I always call him the Light Years Junior Trainer. So many people ask me in the comments why this is his name. Well, it's uh, quite simple. Look at the text that he says right before he fights you. So yeah, that's why he's the Light Years Junior Trainer. With him defeated, I have to head back to training, and I'm going to fight wild Pokemon here. Now, there's one more trainer that I could fight, and by the way, trainers give extra experience, so generally you want to be fighting trainers instead of wild Pokemon. However, in this case, the trainer that I'm not fighting is the rival on Route 22. I don't want to fight him because the Spearow has Peck, which is super effective against Execute, and also, if I defeat him, then he's going to pick the Jolteon team. Jolteon is very fast, and it also knows the move Pin Missile in important battles. The reason I want to avoid it is because bug moves deal four times damage to Execute's typing. Now the second interaction that I want to talk about is the speed interaction on Brock's team. So his Onyx has 23 speed, and if I can get to 24 speed before fighting him, then I'll always move first and he can't just trap me in bind over and over and over again. Then if I'm out speeding, I can also use Hypnosis every time he goes for bide. Now this is the only situation in which Brock will not use a full heal because he's locked into bide. So the AI is just like, yeah, I should wait until Bide finishes to use the full heal. But in this case, that's just bad. He just waits until he wakes up, then Bide continues, and after that, the battle resumes as normal. I'm hoping that because of this interaction, Execute is going to be able to take the win once it starts out speeding. And conveniently for me, at a damage rounding threshold, level 15, Execute has exactly 24 speed. So now, let's take on Brock, the rock-solid Pokemon trainer, and his epic Onix. Up first is Geodude, and what I'm really hoping here is that Execute is not going to take too much damage. Also, it looks like Barrage is doing slightly more than one damage every turn. Maybe it has a chance of dealing one or two damage. By the way, when it calculates damage, if there is any decimal point, then it will just truncate the decimal off and round down. So in this case, if my damage range is somewhere between like 1.8 damage and 2.1 damage, then sometimes I'll deal one damage and sometimes I'll deal two damage. Unfortunately for me, every time the Geodude hits me, it's doing a about 3 damage, and this means by the time I take it out, I have low orange health remaining. Also, I only have 7 PP left on Barrage, so I really don't think I'm going to be able to outlast. Obviously, Onyx has an incredible defense stat, so I'm going to have to chip away at it doing 1 damage per hit. It has 32 hit points, so if every Barrage got a 5 hit, I would knock it out, but that seems very unlikely. As a result, the hopelessness set in. Onyx even went for Bide, but I was just like, ah, whatever, let's spam Barrage. I'll record the fainting animation and then we can go into the next battle and I'll have good footage to make this video. However, here's another strange interaction. In Generation 1, with multi-strike moves, Bide only records the damage from the very first hit. So when Onyx unleashes energy, it doesn't actually deal very much damage to Execute. Still, I only have two more uses of Barrage left, so once I've depleted my PP, I'm going to have to spam 
hypnosis. Oh, okay, so luckily for me, the onyx immediately goes for bide. I put it to sleep, and then while it's asleep, I can continue depleting my hypnosis PP. At this point, you're probably thinking, Scott, you're obviously gonna lose. Just reset, save the time, level up three more times to the next damage rounding threshold, level 18, then come back and beat Brock once and for all. But here's the thing, like I said earlier, I really like to record footage that shows the fainting animation so that these videos can look visually beautiful. I do have a couple scenarios where I don't follow this rule. That's if I've lost like 20 times to one gym leader, then I'll just keep resetting as fast as possible to save time. But in a case like this, I really want to play until the end of the fight. In this case, Onyx sleeps for a while, it wakes up, I put it back to sleep immediately. That's really nice. I continue spamming out Hypnosis. Onyx wakes up. I get incredibly lucky because Hypnosis once again works. Like, if I was trying to use this Hypnosis to get around the Champion's Magneton, it would have missed every single time here. Finally, the Onyx does wake up. I miss a couple times. It unleashes energy. Then it just goes for Bide again. I put it back to sleep. And I finish off all of my PP. So now it is time to use Struggle. Okay, so it's time to talk about one more strange interaction. The recoil damage that you take is also rounded down. So if I'm dealing an odd number in damage, like 3 for instance, I will only take one hit point of recoil damage. And uh, it looks like that's what's happening here. Either I'm dealing 2 damage or I'm dealing 3 damage, but uh, yeah, Execute has just enough health to finish the Onyx off, surviving with one hit point. So, in its very first fight, Execute defeats Brock. Granted, it clocks in with a split around 22 minutes, so this is by no means a good time. Either way, I will take it. That is a pretty hype victory. I love when things are that close. Okay, so now let's head out onto Route 3. One disadvantage here is the fact that Barrage is not very good. This means that I am almost out of PP before I get to the final trainer. As a result, I do have to turn around and head back to Pewter City to heal up. Thanks so much, Nurse Joy, for restoring my PP. And with that, I can proceed on the route. And by the way, I am going to fight this lass. She does have art, which I don't get to show off very much because I usually avoid fighting her. But today, I figured that Execute is going to need the experience points because I don't have a grass-type move to beat me misty with. After making it to the Mount Moon Poké Center, I actually backtracked to the route because I'm like, I should continue fighting these trainers. I need as much experience as I can get. Now, in my last video, the Venomoth Type Randomizer, which uh, I didn't expect to perform that well on YouTube, but it's actually doing really well, so thank you so much. In that video, I mentioned this youngster who I never fight, but today with Execute, I am going to fight him. As a weak first stage Pokémon, what I've found is that if you level up throughout the playthrough to gain as much experience as possible, then you prevent resets over like, why would I try going into a fight with Execute when it's under-leveled, when I can just level up more throughout the entire playthrough, not have to backtrack to these routes later on to get the trainer-boosted experience? This is just overall the best way to play. The unfortunate thing for me is that in Mount Moon, I am going to have to backtrack to the Pokémon Center a lot. To help facilitate this, after I pick up the rare candy, I also grab the escape rope. Normally in Pokemon Yellow, I don't pick up this item because why would I? You can't use it to escape Bill's house and teleport back to Cerulean City. But in Pokemon Yellow, if I want to train for longer periods of time in Mount Moon, I can pick it up and then use it to escape to the Pokemon Center to heal up. Today, I am going to skip all but two trainers in Mount Moon. I'm not going to fight the rocket that's down the first ladder. It just seems a little bit too much out of the way. And I'm also not going to fight the hiker because he's basically Brock but better. After all, he has two Geodudes and an Onyx. Once I make it to the Super Nerd, my Execute is halfway through level 19, and the clock is over 30 minutes. Execute is definitely one of the slowest Pokémon in making it to Cerulean City. Magikarp and Abra are definitely slower, but uh, that's not saying very much. After defeating the Super Nerd, I realize that I might not have enough PP to defeat Jesse and James, so I teach Bide to Execute. You know that the Pokémon you're using is bad when Bide is the best choice available to you. By the way, coming up in May, I'm going to be using another Grass type where Bide is absolutely critical. Stay tuned for that one. Luckily for me, Jesse and James aren't really a threat. I take them out without even having to use Hypnosis. So now, let's head into Cerulean City at 32 minutes. Now here I have a choice. Do I take the Rivalon on Nugget 
Pipe Bridge, or do I head to Misty's Gym? Now, the rival leads with a Spearow that has 33 speed, and it does no peck, so I think the best thing to do is head to Misty. After all, I do have a resistance to her most powerful moves. Still, just to ensure that Execute has enough speed to move first against the rival after I defeat Misty, I'm going to take out the optional trainer in Misty's Gym. He gives a lot of experience after all. Okay, so now it's time for the Pecking Junior Trainer. I need to be careful against this Goldeen because it has a flying type move. Of course, being careful for me means using Hypnosis over and over, having it miss endlessly, but finally, I do put the Goldeen to sleep without sustaining any damage, I will note. See, that's what happens when you use Hypnosis. You don't take any damage. It just feels perfect. So, I'm able to defeat her, and now it's time to take on Misty. Star use first, obviously it is just going to spam tackle, so if I use bide, then I can accumulate damage, ah, unless she uses X defend immediately, that's really frustrating, so my first bide pays back very little damage. Now Misty only has one X defend per Pokemon, so she's not going to do that again. As a result, I do more damage with my next bide, however this tactic is actually allowing her to do a lot of damage to me, especially because I'm under speeding the star you, so I finish it off with barrage. Okay, so now it's time for the star me, I'm going to go for bide here at the start. After unleashing energy and doing more than half, I decide that I don't have enough HP left over to continue this strategy, so I use Hypnosis. Luckily it hits, and now I can use Barrage. Ah, oh, unfortunately it wakes up right away. That's a bit annoying. I spam A a little bit too fast, hit it with another Barrage. Then Misty just uses an X Defend, boosting the Starmie to plus 3 defense. By the way, uh, I have now fixed that glitch that I was having back in my Krabby video, so the defense stat is not all glitched out. This time sleep lasts a little bit longer. I take the star me down to red health. However, it wakes up, hits tackle, taking execute down to three hit points, but then barrage gets a critical hit, and I finish her ace off. So, execute has done it, with no resets. It beat both Brock and Misty. Honestly, for this Pokemon, I think that that is a fairly incredible result, and it was at this point that I was getting very hyped about this playthrough. Unfortunately for me, at level 22, I just barely do not have enough speed to move first against the rival's Spearow, but at least I was able to get enough to get the tie. Unfortunately, on the first turn it moves first. That means it uses Growl, lowering my attack stat before I put it to sleep. That's not very nice. Still, Hypnosis works, and then I get a critical hit with Barrage, allowing me to take the Spearow out over two turns. Next is Santru. I really want to avoid sand attacks here if at all possible. I put it to sleep, and I do manage to take it out without having my accuracy lowered. Next is Rattata. I just decide to go for the barrages here. I take it out, and uh, strangely enough, the rival has not done any damage to me. Eevee's last. I really want to lock in this victory, so I put it to sleep, use barrage, Finally, I get a critical hit, and I finish it off. So, that was a perfect victory for Execute. Well done. Now, with most Pokemon, by this point in the game, you have been able to learn a better move through TM and HM. Like, available to the player at this point are the TMs for Water Gun, Mega Punch, Thunder Wave, Bubble Beam, Seismic Toss, and then, after all of Nugget Bridge, the TM for Dig, but no, Execute cannot learn any of these, and its next level up move is going to be Reflect at level 25. I guess this level up learn set kind of makes sense when you consider the fact that you obtain Execute at a higher level in the Safari Zone later in the playthrough. However, just imagine putting it on your team at that level, because then it would have the moves Hypnosis, Reflect, Leech Seed, and Stun Spore. You'd look at its typing and go like, oh yeah, it's a grass type, let's teach it Mega Drain. And then you'd quickly find out, no, it cannot learn Mega Drain. Then you'd probably pick up the Solar Beam TM and go like, yeah, I'm going to teach it the Solar Beam TM. And I did not mention this earlier, but it cannot learn Solar Beam through TM. It only gets it through Level Up. Like, what? That's so weird! In many cases, the developers made these choices, I think, for uh, flavor reasons. But in this case, I just don't understand that. At least, if you managed to pick up the Egg Bomb TM in the Safari Zone, you'd be like, oh, it can actually learn this move, and then you'd figure out that move is pretty trash because it has very low accuracy. But yeah, I'm not going to have access to that for a long time. So let's head towards Vermilion City now with uh, no good new moves. That does mean that I'm going to have to bypass Sandy, the Sand Attack Spamming Junior Trainer, with only Barrage. And that's very bad, because watch as these accuracy debuffs stack up. 
at minus 1, Barrage has a 56% chance to hit. At minus 2, it has a 42% chance to hit. At minus 3, it's all the way down to a 34% chance to hit. And then at minus 4, yeah, it has a 28% chance. At this point, I've learned Reflect, so I was like, this fight's going to take a long time. I might as well set up Reflect. By the way, I now have a pop-up for the screen so you can see when that's in place. In Generation 1, it never wears off as long as your Pokemon stays in battle, so it's just going to stay there for the rest of the fight. She lowers my accuracy again down to negative 5, so now I only have a 23% chance to hit, but luckily, I am able to take the victory. On the SSN, I can now pick up the second TM that Execute can learn in the entire playthrough. This is the TM for Rest. No, it's not going to be particularly useful yet, but I will grab it just because I'm probably going to end up using it during the League. After that, I grab the candy from the Gentleman's Quarters, and then I go up against the Rival. So this fight is usually very easy, and I expect that to be the case here. After all, his team hasn't leveled up that much. I now am able to outspeed the Spearow. I'm going to put it to sleep with Hypnosis, and then set up Reflect so that I take less damage throughout the rest of the fight. This is going to make the fight so much easier because every single one of his Pokemon deals physical damage. I think that that's the biggest difference between the rival here in Pokemon Yellow and the rival in Red and Blue. After all, in those games he has a Kadabra and also his starter, which deals special damage. I make it to the Eevee. It does lower my accuracy, which is a bit annoying. But luckily in this case, I have Bide, which bypasses accuracy checks. So I can use this to accumulate damage and then reliably pay back damage to the Eevee, knocking it out. Alright, so with him defeated, I have now finished off the SSN. And uh, look at my PP. I only have two more uses of Barrage left over. So here, as I was teaching my Charmander field moves, I had to decide what to do next. Normally, I really like to use Dig to teleport back to Cerulean City to save some walking time, but in this case, I'm actually going to have to go to the Vermilion City Pokemon Center to heal up if I want to have a reliable way to defeat Surge. Okay, thank you Nurse Joy once again for restoring my PP. Now... Let's take on Surge. Okay, so he is probably one of the most inconsistent gym leaders. I expect this to be easy. After all, the grass type resists electric type attacks, so Thunderbolt, the Raichu's most powerful move, is not going to do that much damage. Because of that, I want to negate the damage of Mega Punch and Mega Kick, so I can set up Reflect on the first turn. Raichu goes for Thunderbolt, it does exactly a quarter, Reflect gets set up, and now it is time to use Barrage. However, then Raichu hits Thunderbolt again, gets a critical hit, and takes Execute down to 23 hits points. Alright, that is really not good. Luckily, Surge uses an X speed on the next turn, which is totally useless. He was already faster. So that gives me a free hit. And at this point, I was like, I do not want to take any more damage from the Raichu. So let's use Hypnosis to put it to sleep. I take damage first because it's faster. And then I put it to sleep successfully. Okay, please do not wake up. It doesn't. I hit a second barrage. Okay, it still stays asleep. I hit a third barrage, taking it down to red health. And then Raichu wakes up, but this is generation one, so it doesn't get to attack. I hit barrage, and it hits three times, knocking Surge's only Pokemon out. So with that, Execute has once again beat a gym leader with no resets. And at this point in the playthrough, I was like, I really want to beat the entire game with no resets on Execute. Like, imagine how epic that would be. This Pokemon that is just truly terrible in so many different ways, getting through the entire game with no resets. I think I should have had a reset on all three of these gym leaders to this point, but so far, so good. However, as I walk back to Cerulean City, which is one of the weirdest experiences for me, I want to mention that things are not going to get easy just yet. Because coming up next, of course, is the Wrapping Lass. And with Barrage to deal damage, I am not sure I am going to get by her without her using her Wrapping Tactics. So here's how this fight works. The first Oddish has Stun Spore. If it uses it and cuts your speed, then the Bellsprout knows that you already have a status condition, so it's not going to use Poison Powder or Sleep Powder. Instead, it's just going to use either Wrap or Growth. And since it's faster, it's going to trap you with Wrap and just keep moving first all the time. Luckily for me with Execute, I get poisoned by the first Oddish. This way, I am not going to be able to be paralyzed. However, this is kind of bad because now I'm taking damage throughout the fight, but luckily Barrage is a multi-strike move, and this is one place where I am really glad that that's the case. As a result, I'm able to finish her off. Next is the Pokemaniac with a Cubone and a Slowpoke. Obviously, with my typing, this fight should be so easy. He has a Ground-type, 
and a water psychic type. But this fight is not that easy for Execute. I managed to get through the Q-Bone with green health, but then the Slowpoke comes out, it has Headbutt, which is actually dealing decent damage, and because Slowpoke has decent defenses, I'm not doing very much damage, and it actually takes me down to low orange health. Luckily at the critical moment, the Slowpoke just goes for Disable, so it doesn't hit me, my Barrage connects, and I take him out. Alright, so now I have to confess something. In these playthroughs, sometimes I play like a robot, and today I only bought three repels, which is the optimal number to get through Rock Tunnel. But in this case, I uh, have to go back to the Pokemon Center right away because Execute is so bad. So now I'm going to lose some time in the tunnel because I only have two repels left over, meaning I'm going to run into wild Pokemon. The next mandatory trainer in the cave is also a Pokemaniac. He has a Slowpoke. This fight isn't nearly as hard because he only has one team member. Once I defeat him, Execute levels up to level 28, and finally gets its first Grass-type move in the form of Leech Seed. I teach this in the place of Bide because this move isn't particularly useful after Cerulean City. Unfortunately for me, I'm uh, gonna have to head back to the Pokemon Center and heal once again, making my Repel situation even more dire. I actually considered at this point heading all the way back to Cerulean city to buy more. Figured that that might save a little bit more time, but last minute I was like, nah, let's just keep going. After all, after the status condition junior trainer, I'm probably going to have to backtrack to the center once again. Luckily for me though, she's easy to take out, so I decided to proceed through the cave to the self-destructing hiker. Luckily, Reflect is going to double my defense in the damage calculation. However, when he uses Self-Destruct, it actually divides your defense by two during the damage calculation. So those two things are going to kind of cancel each other out. Barrage is not really a good option to knock his Pokemon out. So I am going to be relying here on Leech Seed and Hypnosis. Honestly, in this case, Execute is much more prepared for this fight than a Pokemon like Aerodactyl was. I even got really unlucky against the first Geodude. I missed Hypnosis, it hit Self-Destruct. But in the end, this strategy is enough and I'm able to finish him off on my first attempt. Okay, so with him finished off, there's only one more trainer in the cave. Uh, unless I make a pathing mistake in the very next area because of a wild encounter, which normally doesn't happen because I have enough repels. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to have to fight this other junior trainer, and she has four Pokemon. <laughs> ah! <gasps> When I was filming this run, I like actually kind of keeled over in pain because I was just like so frustrated. One of the reasons I was really worried about this is because I don't have very much PP left over. Then I would have to make the choice. Do I go through the entire tunnel again, fighting more wild encounters? Or do I backtrack all the way to Cerulean City, pick up repels, then go through this entire area all over again? It seemed like there were only bad options here. However, what I might be able to do is deplete all of my PP using Hypnosis and Leech Seed to knock her Pokemon out so that I can then defeat the one last mandatory trainer in the tunnel. Now, when I finally defeat her, here's where my PP is at. I have one use of Barrage left, I can't use Hypnosis anymore, I have three uses of Leech Seed, and four uses of Reflect. Luckily for me, I picked up one Ether to this point in the playthrough, so I'm going to use this to replenish Barrage's PP. And as a result, I am able to defeat the final junior trainer in the cave and make it to Lavender Town. Okay, so I think it's time to reflect on the statement that I made at the very beginning of this video. And that was that this might be my favorite playthrough in Pokemon Yellow yet. And here's why. When I started this series, what I really wanted was to be able to explore a lot of weird alternative strategies and learn the game better than I had when I was a kid. After all, then I would just give my Charizard the moves Ember, Fire Spin, Flamethrower, and Fire Blast. After all, it's a fire type, so it should have all of the fire moves. So in this case, Execute is really fulfilling that. It has made interesting use of the move Bide. It had to use Hypnosis and Leech Seed together in combination with the move Reflect, which by the way, was a move I never once used as a kid. Well, I probably used it once, but then was immediately like, oh, this move does nothing. I'm never going to use that again. Also contributing to my enjoyment of this Execute playthrough was how close all of the battles have been. Each one of them has felt so exciting in its own way. However, now we are reaching a point in the playthrough where a major change is going to occur. Because once I reach Celadon City, I'm going to get access to the department store. Here, I can purchase a fresh water, and then before doing anything else, I'm going to make my way to Saffron City. Of course here, there is an obvious thing that I want to do next, and that is pick up the TM for Psychic. Now up until this point, Reflect has been fairly useful, but I'm going to remove it now because I can relearn it with a TM later on if I need this move. So finally, Execute has access to a powerful same type attack bonus move. 
Next, I take my time and explore the rocket hideout, collecting important items along the way. Then in the department store, I sell a lot of these items so that I can buy vitamins. In this case, I think it makes the most sense to purchase calcium to boost Execute's special. After all, this is a combined stat, so it's used both offensively and defensively. Okay, so now it's time to head to Pokemon Tower to take on the rival. This fight is going to be the perfect way to prove that the challenge has changed fundamentally. Now, with Psychic, these battles are going to be so much easier. I'm actually able to one-hit Pokemon now. Both the Shelter and the Santru go down to a single hit. All that's left is Eevee, and I'm able to take it out over two turns. Now, Agatha Jr., who's the first mandatory trainer in Pokemon Tower, could be a little bit scary, and that's not just because of her aesthetic. It's because I'm speed-tied with her Ghastly. Luckily, I win the tie on the first one, knocking it out with a single Psychic. The second one comes in, and once again, I win the speed tie, so no issues today. And with that, it feels like Execute could be off to the races. Now, I'm going to do something here that I normally don't do, which is train against the Chandler. After all, Psychic is super effective, so I'm able to knock their Pokemon out in a single hit. The reason I normally don't do this training is just because each one of them only has one Pokemon and they don't have particularly good experience yields. Almost two years ago I calculated the number of experience per unit of time that you get in each area by training, assuming that you're going to one hit all of the Pokemon, and Pokemon Tower is actually one of the worst areas to train. However with Execute, getting the extra special and speed stat experience that the Ghastlies have, I think think is worth it. Plus, I have no idea what level I'm going to need to defeat the champion, and I'm uh, quite terrified thinking about that, so let's do all of the grinding that I can in the mid-game. After that's done, I take on Jesse and James at the top of the tower. Of course, this fight is so easy. It is a series of three one-hits. With that out of the way, I head to Cycling Road. Here, I grind against the trainers, because I want to get as many levels as is possible. After all, even with all this additional training that I've done to this point in the game, my execute is still only in in the mid 30s. So with that done, Execute heads home to the Safari Zone. Now in here, there is one critical item to pick up, and that is the TM for Egg Bomb. In Generation 1, this move can only be learned by three evolutionary lines, the Execute line, Chansey, and Mew. I also find it really weird that this move cannot be learned through level up. It is only accessible through TM. Why is that the case? I don't get it. Like, I feel like Execute and Chansey should both learn this move through level up. I finish off the Safari Zone, and then I head to Erica's gym in Celadon City. With Psychic on my side, training in this gym is very quick, so I defeat all the trainers, and then at level 38, I go up against Erica herself. So of all the gym battles in the game to this point, I think this one is going to be the easiest. I'm able to two-shot the Tangela with Psychic, and now both the Weeping Bell and Gloom are part poison type, allowing me to get super effective damage, one-hitting both of them. So with that, I have defeated Erica and earned myself the TM for Mega Drain, which of course is completely useless. <laughs> After that, I head back to Fuchsia City and Koga's Gym. Here, I'm going to teach Execute Egg Bomb in the place of Barrage. After all, I need a move that can deal decent damage to these jugglers' Psychic-type Pokémon. Unfortunately, even though it has base 100 power, and my attack stat has a boost from Brock's badge, I am still not able to one-hit the Psychic-types with it. Ah. Uh, anyways, I do manage to get through both of them and make it to Koga. Okay, so I expect this fight to not be that challenging. After all, I'm going into it at level 39 with a first stage Pokemon. Now, the reason I expect it to not be a challenge is because Psychic is super effective against all of his Pokemon. I'm able to knock out all three Venonats without any issues, and then Venomoth comes out. Now, here's the thing. It knows that Toxic is super effective, so it goes for it first turn, allowing me to get one Psychic in, and luckily I do more than half. However, Venomoth also knows that Leech Life is super effective, so on the next turn it uses it, and it does so much damage because of a critical hit, which also heals the Venomoth back into green health. Okay, so uh, I think this is going to be my first loss. My next Psychic does not get the KO. It causes a special drop. I take poison damage down to five hit points. And uh, then Koga uses an X attack. I get another Psychic and I finish him off. I could not believe this. Like, what? Execute still has no resets and it has five badges. 
Now you might think that during these challenges my eyes kind of glaze over. After all, in the last three years I have played Pokemon Yellow hundreds of times. However, I am normally really engaged and enjoying myself a lot. However, it was at the moment that I defeated Koga that my engagement with this challenge spiked. I was so invested in getting a playthrough with Execute that had no resets. So one way to ensure that I'm not going to get any resets going forward is doing as much training as is possible. So one area where there are a ton of trainers is Saffron City. City. First I head to Sylph and I fight like every single rocket here. After that I head to the fighting dojo because I have super effective damage with Psychic so I can take out all of these Pokemon very quickly. Now at this point because of my level I have learned Solar Beam, my only damage dealing grass type move. And instead of taking on a major trainer what I'm going to do is surf to Cinnabar Island. And along the way I can fight a lot of swimmers who have water type Pokemon. By doing this, I get level 47 before Pokemon Mansion. Now I've come here specifically so I can grab any vitamins. Unfortunately, I can't get the calcium, but I can use the Carbos. On the bottom floor, I run into Eradicate. These are really annoying in Pokemon Yellow because they have great speed, and uh, they also have Hyper Fang and Super Fang. I really didn't want to test my luck any further, so I actually used Dig to escape the mansion, then I had to come back in to collect the rare candies and the secret key before finally being done with this place altogether. Alright, so now it's time to choose. At level 47, which major battle do I take on next? Really, there are only two choices. Either the rival in Sylph or Blaine. And I think exactly has a much better time against the rival. First he sends in Sandslash, I go for Hypnosis, putting it to sleep, and then I use Solar Beam to knock it out in one hit. Next is Cloister, I don't want to get hit by Aurora Beam here so I go for Hypnosis, but it misses, Cloister uses the beam, and I take about a third. Unfortunately it lowers my attack, I use Hypnosis, putting it to sleep on the next turn, I go for Solar Beam, and it gets the one hit. Okay, so I've made it to the Magneton, here I use Psychic, it does more than half, then Magneton supersonic hits, confusing me, which is annoying, but I do take it out and move on to the Kadabra. Okay, so I'm faster than it. I use Hypnosis, but it misses. Kadabra hits Psybeam. It doesn't do very much damage. I miss another Hypnosis. It misses a Disable. And then I thought, why am I trying to put this thing to sleep? I should just use Egg Bomb and knock it out in one hit, but no. Kadabra survives the Egg Bomb because my attack was lowered. Luckily, the rival uses a Potion, but then my next Egg Bomb misses. It hits Confusion. It doesn't do that much. And then I finish it off on the next turn. Okay, so with that experience, Execute levels up to level 48, and finally, I am able to remove Hypnosis. Okay, so it's time for the Flareon. Unfortunately for me, my more accurate sleep move does not put it to sleep, but luckily, Flareon just misses Fire Spin, and I get two Psychics in, knocking it out. Still no resets. Of course, the rest of Sylph is completely easy. I finish off Giovanni, collect the TM for Mimic, and then I head into Sabrina's gym. By the way, instead of heading through here too quickly, I decide to face a bunch of the optional trainers. After all, I have Psychic, Solar Beam, and Egg Bomb. This is actually a great moveset to train in this gym, because I can defeat a lot of the Water types, Psychic types, and Ghost types with ease. Okay, so with the trainers out of the way, let's take on Sabrina. Now in Pokemon Yellow, she is quite random, and it's going to be even more random today than it normally is because I do not outspeed the Abra. Unfortunately, it hits a flash right away, and I'm going to be relying on Egg Bomb for her, so it misses. Abra hits flash again, finally boosting my speed so that I can move first. My next Egg Bomb takes her lead out in a single hit. She sends in Kadabra, and at this point, things are not looking particularly good. I go for Sleep Powder to try and put it to sleep, but with my accuracy cut, I only have a 37% chance to hit. As a result, the Kadabra is able to hit twice with Kinesis, lowering Execute to minus 4 accuracy. As a result, I am just not able to hit enough times, and I get my first reset. Here's the thing about Sabrina in Generation 1. She is so inconsistent herself, so in the very next battle, I'm able to come back in, the Abra just misses a flash and I one-shot it with Egg Bomb, and then against the Kadabra it misses a Kinesis, I do massive damage to it, taking it to red health, then it hits Psychic, which actually does a lot because of a critical hit. That seems kind of unfair. It also lowers my special, which is a bit annoying. I finish the Kadabra off on the next turn, then Alkazam comes out, she uses an X Defend, allowing me to put it to sleep with Sleep Powder, and from there, I'm able to finish her off with Egg Bomb. So, while I was able to win, I was not able to get the reset free playthrough. A bit disappointing, but that might have had to happen anyways. After all, the next gym leader is Blaine.
Now, in most of my videos, I have talked about how Blaine is one of the best gym leaders in Pokemon Yellow, and today that really worries me. My speed, unfortunately, is nowhere near the value it needs to be to move first against any of his Pokemon. What I'm hoping for is that I can land a Sleep Powder, putting the opponent to sleep, and then slowly knock them out with Psychic. Now, using this move has the additional advantage because it can lower their special. Oh, uh, by the way, I have not actually debugged the opponent's stats to the degree that I needed to for this video. I filmed this one close after Krabby, by the way, and on the date that I'm doing this voiceover, I have resolved all these issues completely. I'm able to knock out Blaine's Ninetales and move on to the Rapidash. I thought that I might want to bypass Sleep Powder against it, since its best fire move is Fire Spin, but instead, I get taken down to red health. Ah, that's uh, what happens when the Ninetales lowers your defense. Blaine's team just has incredible synergy. I am able to move on to his Arcanine, but things are not looking good. It outspeeds, uses Flamethrower, and that's it. So Execute gets its second reset. Okay, so just get the Sleep Powder right away on the Ninetales. Okay, Confusion, I hit myself, then Ninetales goes for Quick Attack, I hit myself again, it goes for Tail Whip, I hit myself again, and then Ninetales chooses Flamethrower and knocks Execute out. Okay, I uh, doubt that I could have a worse outcome than that. However, I actually get it in the next fight. Sleep Powder misses once and twice. I get hit by Flamethrower at full health. This takes me all the way down to red health. Then my next Sleep Powder misses again, and Ninetales finishes me off with the second flamethrower. I guess this is kind of to be expected. I thought the early portions of the playthrough would be much more difficult, that I would have an easy mid-game, and by the time I had reached Blaine, I was expecting more challenges. In the next battle, I revert to the Sleep Powder strategy on the Rapidash. I am able to take it out. However, I have low health for the Arcanine, and once again, it just goes for Flamethrower, finishing Execute off. Here's the thing, I don't really think there is a better strategy for this fight. If I level up more, I'm still probably not going to be outspeeding. I would need like, I'm estimating at least 10 levels to make that happen, and I really don't want to use my rare candies just yet. However, in the very next battle, I make it back to the Arcanine, and this time I have green health. It goes for takedown, I survive, sleep powder hits, I'm able to start using psychic. My first one gets a special drop, Arcanine stays asleep, I hit another psychic, taking it to red health, Arcanine stays asleep, and with that I have defeated Blaine, earning myself the Volcano Badge, and with it comes a 12.5% boost to my special stat. So let's dig out of the gym, yes you can do that, I fly to Viridian City, because now it's time to take on the last gym leader, Giovanni. However, before I do that, I am going to face all the trainers in his gym, just to level up as much as is possible. With them out of the way, and my execute at almost level 53, I am ready to take him on. Alright, so this fight is pretty unfortunate. I have lower speed than the Dugtrio and the Persian. I am speed tied with the Nidoqueen. The Nido King is faster than me, and I am only faster than the Rhydon, which is not very good. At least once I knock the Dugtrio out, I do level up, giving me enough speed to move first against the Nidoqueen. Unfortunately, the Persian sets up double team on the first turn. My Psychic misses. It hits Screech, lowering my defense. Hmm, that's not so nice. Luckily, it doesn't go for Slash, which always gets a crit because of Persian's base speed. Instead, it just goes for Fury Swipes. I survive with more than half health and then finish it off with a second Psychic. Okay, time for the Nido Queen. Now, getting hit by Screech did badge boost my special stat, so my Psychic is going to hit a little bit harder. However, it isn't quite enough to finish Giovanni's tanky Pokemon off. It survives, but then it just goes for Tail Whip. Okay, so this happens very often on the Nidos when you're a Grass type. Their AI is seeing that Earthquake is not very effective against Grass, Thunder is not very effective against Grass, and Double Kick is not very effective against against Psychic, so in this case the only moves they can actually use are Tail Whip or Leer. So with that, I have made it to the Rhydon. Now, while this thing is slow, it hits like a truck with Rock Slide and Earthquake. I go for Psychic against it, hoping for the one hit, but it survives. However, uh, Giovanni just goes for a guard spec, <laughs> so thanks! I get the win anyways. And with that, I am almost off towards the League. The only battle in my way is the rival on Route 22. He leads with Sand Slash. Now, I didn't want to take two turns to use Solar Beam, so I just went for Psychic. It doesn't finish it off. I take a small amount of damage before knocking it out, and then he sends in Execute. Now, I really don't have anything good against it, so I'm going to put it to sleep. Well, if Sleep Powder hits, I get poisoned as a result, and then I decide to use Egg Bomb. But this isn't capable of two-hitting, which is 
frustrating as a result of missing a lot and taking poison damage and getting hit by solar beam i only have red health left over for the cloister now if i use solar beam i'm gonna lose and if i use psychic i'm gonna lose so yeah that's a reset all right, so I think it's time to give up Egg Bomb. This move served its purpose in the mid game, but now it's kind of just dead weight. I think Rest is gonna have a lot more utility. Now against the Execute, if it poisons me, I can just heal myself, which is exactly what happens. Once I wake up, I can put it back to sleep with Sleep Powder and then finish it off with Psychic. Since I wanna use Solar Beam on the Cloister, I put it to sleep first and then watch this. I charge my Solar Beam, and then it misses. So yeah, that was a Gen 1 miss on the Cloister. As a result, it wakes up when I charge my next solar beam and hits an aurora beam, doing a lot before I finish it off. Really annoying, I miss on the magneton, get confused, hit myself, finally sleep powder works, I'm not confused anymore, so I heal up. Then the magneton uses supersonic again, I hit myself a little bit, it uses swift, finally I put it back to sleep. This is not the most enjoyable battle, but I am eventually going to be able to knock it out. With that, I move on to the cadabra. Luckily this line isn't very scary to face with execute since you resist the psychic type attack with your psychic typing. However, it does hit me with psychic lowering my special, which is very annoying. Still, I do manage to finish it off, move on to the Flareon. Now I need to treat this thing with respect because it has flamethrower. I set up sleep powder. My psychic is not doing very much, but it gets the job done with three hits. And with that, I'm off to the league. Now interestingly enough, it took me about 20 minutes to beat Brock, and over 45 to beat Lieutenant Surge, but since then it has really felt like the game has gone significantly faster, even though I've been doing a lot of training. However, even with all that work put in, I still want to be safe with Execute, so I head to the power plant to pick up one last rare candy. That means throughout all my adventures, I have collected 12 in total, and I am now going to use all 12 of them on Execute to bring it up from level 55 to level 67 before I face Lorelei. Okay, so let's not delay any longer. It is time for the Elite Four. So, the Ice Master is up first, and theoretically she should be scary for Execute because I have a type disadvantage here. However, Sleep Powder in combination with Solar Beam is super effective against most of her Pokémon because they're water types. I'm able to one-hit the Dugong, Cloister's next, I go for Sleep Powder, put it to sleep, set up Solar Beam, and knock it out in a single hit. Okay, time for the slow bro. Now, I want to keep my moveset as it is for the rest of the league. I think it's like the perfect balance for Execute, so I don't have Mimic here, that means I'm gonna have to knock this thing out with solar beam and not set up with amnesia. Next is Jinx. Sleep Powder now decides to miss, allowing it to hit an ice punch, but it doesn't freeze. That's good. I put it to sleep, hit with solar beam, taking it down to red health, and then I finish it off with psychic. Okay, so the first league member only has one Pokemon left. It's Lapras. I put it to sleep, it wakes up right away, Sleep Powder misses, it hits Blizzard, and finishes Execute off. Okay, so that shouldn't be too bad. I can just come in, sweep through our whole team again. Oh no, I miss Sleep Powder on the Cloister. It goes for Ice Beam and freezes me. Ah, <sighs> Gen 1 freezes are so annoying. In a recent stream, I was asked what rules would I change if I started this whole series over again. By the way, I am kind of resistant to changing things now just because of how many videos I have made with this rule set. If I was to change one thing, I would probably divide the reset metric into different types of resets because resetting when you get frozen is like very different from like accidentally using a rare candy before Lieutenant Surge and resetting because of that player error. Okay, anyways, let's go back into that fight and take Lorelei out. This time it shouldn't be so bad. And then Jinx hits a huge ice punch. All right, it was a crit, so I don't have very much health left for the Lapras. Hopefully Solar Beam will get the one hit. And in this case, it does. Okay, so let's fade out that old music. It is way too intense for this next room. Cue silly music, because we have to face the Hiker, and he is a fighting type specialist, and I am a psychic type with the move Psychic. So in this case, I'm just going to one hit every single one of his Pokemon. Imagine being this like giant buff gym rat, and then a 10 year old kid brings in five eggs that have faces, and they just completely stomp your entire team. It must be just so embarrassing for him. Now normally after him, Agatha is quite brutal, but today that's not going to be the case, because all the ghost types in Gen 1 have the unfortunate disadvantage of also having the poison type, meaning that psychic moves are super effective against them, and as a result I'm able to one hit all of her team members until the final Gengar. However, she doesn't have good AI, this means that she just goes for random moves, in this case hitting psychic, it's not enough, and I finish her off. 
Okay, so it's time to take on Lance. Now his team has a lot of flying types, but I'm not that scared because the only one that actually has a flying type move is the Aerodactyl. Yes, the Dragonite does have Blizzard, which is super effective, and Fire Blast, which is super effective, but I have more speed than that thing, so I should be able to just put it to sleep. I make it through his first three team members using Psychic. This move is neutral against them. And then on Aerodactyl, it moves first, hits Fly, only does about a third. I put it to sleep, and then I finish it off with two Psychics. Dragonite's last. I use Sleep Powder. It works. And with that, I am able to defeat the final Elite Four member. But the champion still remains, and in Pokemon Yellow, this is usually one of the most difficult battles of the game. So let's see how Execute is going to manage. Up first is Sand Slash. Now because he has good AI, it is going to constantly be using Poison Sting. I just really didn't want to get poisoned, so that's why I was using Sleep Powder, but in the end it poisons me anyways. Ugh. So it's going to take a little bit longer to knock it out because I just want to use Rest so that I don't have the status condition for the rest of the fight. I'm able to heal up, put it back to sleep, and use Solar Beam to knock it out in a single hit. Okay, time for the Alakazam. It is going to move first. I was hoping that it wouldn't use Psychic and drop my special. It uses Psy Beam, so that's good. I try for Sleep Powder. It misses. Alakazam goes for Psychic. Luckily, I don't have a special drop, and I put it to sleep. Okay, so I'm going to knock it out with Solar Beam. This is going to take a total of four turns, because Solar Beam isn't enough to one-hit it. Ah, uh, unless Solar Beam gets another Gen 1 miss. This has got to be the worst move to Gen 1 miss with, by the way. Luckily, even though Alakazam wakes up during my last Solar Beam, it hits Psychic doesn't lower my special, and then I finish it off. Okay, so now it's time for Execute to beat up its big brother. This one is not going to be particularly fun because I have to take it out with a resisted Psychic or a resisted Solar Beam. Now working in my advantage is the fact that the Executor is not very capable of dealing out damage. Also because of my typing it is never going to use Leech Seed. So really if I just put it to sleep and slowly whittle it down with Psychic, that is going to get the job done. Plus I can take all the time that I need to to heal up here. I finish it off, move on to the Magneton, put it to sleep, hit Psychic, taking it down to half health, and then even though it wakes up, I finish it on the next turn. Okay, I am so close, but Cloyster and Flareon both present significant threats. I put the Cloyster to sleep. By the way, this is getting really close. I only have one more sleep powder left over. I'm able to knock it out with Solar Beam, and now it is time for the moment of truth. Will sleep powder work against the Flareon? And it does. As a result, I'm able to hit Psychic once, twice, and three times. And with that, Execute clocks in. It gets a time of 1 hour, 51 minutes, and 25 seconds, with only 8 resets. It finished the game at level 70, and all of this took 7 hours and 2 minutes of game time. So here's why I said this might be my favorite playthrough in all of Pokemon Yellow. A lot of the strategies were interesting. I had to use moves like Solar Beam and Egg Bomb, which don't get utilized very much. I didn't have any Mimic or Body Slam usage in the entire playthrough. I got to indulge my inner sleep addict by using both Hypnosis and Sleep Powder. And also, there were so many exciting fights. Plus, its final finish is actually pretty impressive. While the real time and game time are not that good, the fact that it only had 8 resets is also quite surprising. However, then I started to think about doing a second playthrough with it, and I got really worried. Like, this is one of those instances where I just look at its first results and go, I don't know if I'm gonna do better than that. The first gym leaders are probably gonna cause way more problems the second time around, and I could see myself getting stuck on Blaine for even longer. So without delaying any longer, let's get into the second playthrough results and see what I was able to make happen. I decided that taking on Brock at level 15 just makes the most sense. After all, the interaction between Sleep and Bide really does give Execute a good advantage. However, this time I planned my experience slightly differently, so now I'm going to level up to level 16 when I go into the fight against the Onyx. This way, I'm able to get just a little bit more HP, which can be critical. Also, in this battle against Brock, I actually get better circumstances than last time, which means I have more Barrage PP to take his snake down with. As a result, I'm able to finish it off and I still have a couple uses left over, so no need for struggle. Through the next section of the game, I do a lot of training. This leads me to almost level 21 right before Misty. Now she isn't particularly challenging for Execute to take out because I have Hypnosis, so I'm able to put her Pokemon to sleep and knock them out with Barrage. 
Unfortunately for me, the rival on Nugget Bridge is much worse this time, and there wasn't really any play that I had to get around this. He just uses accuracy lowering moves with the Sand True, and Execute keeps missing. I try to knock it out with Bide, but I don't have enough health to consistently use this move throughout the rest of the fight, and then the Rattata just knocks me out. Luckily though, I only have one reset here, and I managed to defeat him in the next fight. Unfortunately though, on Nugget Bridge, I fight this Zubat, and uh, it is too much for execute, so that is my second reset. And this one was pretty painful because I have to go back and fight the rival again, and then he defeats me. So it looks like my worst fears are playing out. The early game is much worse for execute this time around. However, after I defeat the rival this time, I'm able to get through all the way to the SSN, and then uh, the gentleman burns me with his ponyta, and uh, that reduces the damage that Barrage deals, and so that's another reset for execute. Luckily, I say right in front of him, so I'm able to go right back into the battle, put the pony to sleep, and then defeat it. Now at this point you're probably like, you should just restart the playthrough and collect better results with Execute, but I don't want to do that because I only restart playthroughs if the Pokemon is inconsistent in the first section of the game. So the rival in the lab, the rival on Route 22, or the battle against Brock. In this case, we are too far in, and plus I want to get some results to show how Execute would fare if it didn't get incredible luck like it had the first time around. I'm able to defeat the rival on the SSN on the first attempt, which is pretty lucky because it had minus two accuracy. So it's time for Surge. This fight is actually much better this time because he doesn't hit me with a critical hit from Thunderbolt. I'm able to use Barrage and Sleep together to knock the Raichu out. Okay, so time for the wrapping glass. Uh, I expected this one to be actually quite bad. I thought she was going to get a stun spore, but instead she gets a poison. And this is scary. Just watch my health as I defeat her Pokemon. It gets whittled down little by little until at the very end on the final Bellsprout, it uses a wrap, which is a multi-turn move. As a result, it stacks poison over and over and over again. However, it only hits twice, allowing me to strike back with Barrage. Then Execute takes poison damage all the way down to two hit points, and yeah, Bellsprout uses growth, so I hit another barrage, and finish her off. Yes! This is the kind of result that Execute is used to getting from the last playthrough. Now in the tunnel against Dudley, the self-destructing hiker, I uh, expect that I should be able to win this fight on the first attempt, and things play out even better for me here because the first Geodude does not use self-destruct right away, so I'm able to have Reflect by the time it goes for it. And because of that, it looks like this fight is going to be more consistent. By the way, I bought more Repels for this area this time, so after defeating him, I'm able to unlock Psychic and speed up the rest of the playthrough. The rival in Pokemon Tower Execute doesn't have any problems against. After that, I still do a lot of training in the mid game. It does not make sense to skip this with a Pokemon as weak as Execute. After that, I fight Erika at level 39. By the way, she's totally consistent. No problems at all against her. And then I head into Sylph to face the rival. At this point, because of all my training, I am level 47, and I have a really good moveset of Psychic, Solar Beam, and Egg Bomb. The reason I'm doing this fight before Koga is just because the Venomoth has Leech Life, and if it uses that, that I could have many resets there in a row. Last time I got lucky in that fight, and I don't want to bank on that in this case. I figured that this level was going to be enough to defeat the rival, but unfortunately for me I miss Sleep Powder against the Flareon when I'm poisoned, and then it goes for Fire Spin, and that combo is quite potent, so Execute ends up losing. In the next fight, I get really unlucky and the Sand Slash poisons me right away. I didn't want the same thing to play out again, so I just reset right away to try and save as much possible time. This time I make it back to the Flareon. I don't have much health, but at least my Sleep Powder works, and as a result, I am able to win. Okay, so now at level 49, it is time to face Koga. Let's talk about damage ranges. Psychic has guaranteed one hit on all three of the Venonats, and then a guaranteed two hit on the Venomoth. At this level, I'm able to deal 67 to 80% damage to his ace, and his leech life is going to recover somewhere between 17 and 20 hit points, so I am going to be able to two hit even if he goes for this move. In this case, he just uses Toxic again, so I finish him off. All right, so now it is time for a major change in the routing to make things more more consistent. Execute really didn't have any problems against the late game trainers, so I am going to use Rare Candies before Blaine, and I am going to use 10 of them. This takes Execute up from level 50 to level 60. 
Without these candies, I have a 3 hit on all of Blaine's Pokemon. But with the candies, I have guaranteed 2 hits on the Ninetales and the Rapidash. I could also potentially knock them out in 1 hit if I get a critical hit. Also the Arcanine, which was before a chance to 3 hit, is now a guaranteed 3 hit, and I also have a 20% chance to 2 hit it. And in this case, I get the special drop on the first turn, and that gives me the 2 hit. So, no resets on Blaine. That is a time savings, and I'm hoping that that's going to give Execute better results by the end of this playthrough. Okay, Sabrina, please don't be like last time. It was so awful. I am doing her after Blaine specifically, so I have the 10 levels for the rare candies. This gives Execute enough speed to move first against the Abra and one-shot it with Egg Bomb. Kadabra moves first, hits Psy Wave, doing a lot of damage. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> At least Egg Bomb is a guaranteed one hit. Last is Alakazam. Egg Bomb is not going to be a guaranteed one hit. It goes for Psy Wave, which does like almost no damage. Okay, that is better. I put it to sleep, and as a result, maybe able to hit twice with Egg Bomb and knock it out. No resets here either. So now it's time for Giovanni. I get really lucky here because he uses a guard spec on the Doug Trio. It would just one hit me if it went for Fissure. It goes for Dig next turn, gets a critical hit, which is annoying, but I still managed to take it out. Now against the Persian, I'm going to get a guaranteed two hit with Psychic. It sets up double team, but it doesn't matter and I finish it off. My higher level gives me outspeeds and one hits on the Nido Queen and the Nido King. This just speeds things up. They're not going to use any tail whips or leers. <laughs> After that, it's time for the ride on, and Psychic doesn't have the guaranteed one hit, so I just go for Solar Beam. Like, it doesn't really matter. I'm skipping the move selection screen by doing this, and the ride on has no way to KO me, so this is a fine choice. Now, for the rival on Route 22, I'm gonna make a change to my move set. I am not gonna teach Rest in the place of Egg Bomb. Honestly, I don't really need Rest for this fight because I'm a higher level, the Execute is not gonna be that bad to take out. Plus, I'm uh, relying on sleep powder, I know. It is a Scott's Thoughts playthrough. It wouldn't feel like one if I wasn't relying on my sleep moves. I finish off the Sand Slash, next is Execute, I put it to sleep, and then I knock it out with two Egg Bombs. After that, it's time for Cloister. I just put it to sleep, finish it off with Solar Beam, and then I two hit the Magneton with Psychic. After that, it is time for Kadabra. I can use Egg Bomb against this thing to get the guaranteed one hit, and then it's time for the Flareon. I put it to sleep and finish it off with two psychics. So with that, Execute is off to the league. And here is where I'm going to make a major change. Instead of having rest against Lorelei, I can teach Mimic. Then with the combo of Sleep Powder and Solar Beam, I'm going to be able to get through the Dugong and the Cloister, although I have a pretty messy fight here and I only have orange health left over for the Slowbro. Still, I can put it to sleep with Sleep Powder and I resist both its attacking moves. As a result, I'm able to take the time I need to set up Amnesia, and with that, I I am able to consistently knock out Lorelei's next two Pokemon. Bruno, I guess. Also, uh, Agatha, I guess. I have Mimic here, so I'm going to use the Substitute strategy, which makes things a little bit more reliable. I can't hit myself in confusion anymore, and uh, yeah. I beat her on my first attempt too. Against Lance, Mimic is more useful than Rest once again, because I can use Sleep Powder in combination with Psychic to knock out his first two Pokemon, then Sleep Powder in combination with Mimic to steal Ice Beam from the second Dragonair, and then, with my special stat, I can just use Ice Beam to sweep through the rest of his team and take a nice victory. So, all that's left is the champion. Let's do this. I am feeling quite good about my time. Execute is going to get a better performance in this run, despite all of the resets in the early game. Plus, I think if I played a lot of Execute playthroughs, there would be a lot of randomness in the early game, just because it isn't very good before it gets psychic. I make it through all of the champion's Pokemon, get to the Cloister, hit with Solar Beam, knock it out with one hit, Sleep Powder works on the Flareon, and I finish it off with two Psychics. So, Execute clocks in with a time of 1 hour 45 minutes and 39 seconds. It had seven resets, one less than last time. It finished the game at level 66, four levels lower than last time, and this took six hours and 33 minutes of game time. All right, I'm very happy with these results. I was able to improve all of Execute's metrics. Still, this is not a good performance for a Generation 1 Pokemon. Anytime you're over like an hour and 20 minutes, it's kind of a bad performance, and this took significantly longer than that. So where do these results earn Execute a place in the tier list? Well, it's under a two hour time, so it's gonna be part of the F tier. Unfortunately, it's slightly slower than Cubone, so today it earns itself the last spot in the tier. Now, just before I close out this video, I wanna mention a Pokemon that feels very similar to Execute. It feels like the worst version, and that's Abra. 
because Abra has an absolutely terrible early game until it gets Psychic, and then as soon as it gets that move, it starts sweeping through the rest of the game with great ease. However, with Abra, things all just feel much more extreme. It is absolutely terrible before Brock. I think it took me like three hours to beat Brock. And then it gets Mega Punch, which is not much better because it's mostly a special attacker. But once it gets Psychic, the rest of the game feels completely easy. Whereas for Execute, the early game is bad, but it's not that bad. And then the late game is easier, but it's not that much easier. Interestingly enough, both of them are Psychic types, and both of them have performed quite poorly. I think what's going to emerge eventually is the fact that the Poison type and the Psychic type are actually quite similar in terms of their performance in the tier list. Good psychic types will be very high up on the tier list, and bad psychic types will be very low down on the tier list. The same goes for poison types. The excellent Pokemon like Victory Bell, Gengar, Nidoking, Vileplume, and Nidoqueen are all at the top of the list. The uh, terrible poison types like the mono poison types, Ekans and Coughing, they're at the bottom of the list. Also, Zubat, it is a dual type, but it's still bad. Anyways, like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and comment because I gotta read them all. Thank you so much if you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships. It really makes this content possible. If you made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you next week for a snubble playthrough of Pokemon Crystal. Okay, let's take on Oak with only Execute. And this battle is really tricky for Execute because if you face the Charizard team, he has two fire types back to back. Making matters even worse is the fact that I don't always make it through the Tauros and the Executor. After all, I can miss Sleep Powder on the Executor, get hit by Hypnosis, and then knocked out by Barrage and Stomp. When I do defeat it, I have to take out the Arcanine, it's not that bad, but then the Charizard that follows is very scary. It has both Fire Spin and Flamethrower, and it can usually knock me out. However, in this case, at the critical moment, I am able to put it to sleep, use Rest to heal, Charizard stays asleep, I use Psychic once, and one more time getting a critical hit and knocking it out. Okay, so time for Oak's Ace, it's Gyarados, Sleep Powder hits, and I'm able to finish it off. 